Hey, welcome back to the Speedster Rebuild. We're gonna get this guy on the road again. All right, so the things that we need to get checked out today is we need to hook up Ruxtal linkage, we need to hook up Rocky Mountain brakes, and we need to mount the wheels onto the car. And that has posed a little bit of an issue. So the wheels here are actually Dodge 20 inch wheels and they have adapters that adapt them to T hubs. Pretty ingenious and in the way that they were put together, very nice. I mean, they did a heck of a job. Where it kind of draws us into an issue is how they had the Rocky Mountains hooked up. So I think this car originally had a early differential under, which would make sense. This is a 1917 Speedster and it's now got a 26.7 differential. And you're thinking, why would you put the later differential? If you're not familiar with Model Ts, the reason is, is that you get better brakes. The 26.7s have a wide uh, brake band for the emergency brake that's like two or three times larger than the early brakes. So it's a common, common upgrade for Model Ts to have that later differential underneath there. The issue that we had is in order to fit the Rocky Mountains on, they actually had an early Rocky Mountain brake setup, and then they drilled holes in the old backing plates, and they had wood wheel hub adapters to mount it. I mean, it was, it was a mess. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna sanitize this thing up a bit. I'm gonna take those early Rocky Mountain brakes, and I'm gonna adapt them and make them fit these 26.7 differential. After that, we need to hook up the Rockstall so it has an actuator to actually shift it. And I'm gonna actually be adapting the what was the Rocky Mountain brakes, I'm gonna make that an outside shifter. That opens up the cockpit even more, so now we don't have a shift lever in the middle like it used to. And I think this is gonna look and, look and work way better. The hubs are a little bit worn, so when the brake drum gets put on, so when this hub gets put on, and see this is the adapter, it's a, it's a machined flange. It's got a hub cap. I mean, the whole thing is, they really did a pretty sweet job. And then here's the new, well, I say new, but the original brake drum, this guy slides over this like that in a whammo. Uh, it's ready to go on. So the, one of our issues is when this assembly gets all put together, it overhangs this backing plate. That's a good sign that the hub on these is a little worn on the taper. Let's go ahead and put this guy on. Well, you look at that. I thought it was to be worse than that. For some reason, I thought it was significantly worse than that. And you can see that there's no need to put a shim on there because it's not overhanging the backing plate. If I went ahead and tightened up this hub, this would overhang. This hub is not tight, it's just finger tight. You need to draw out these two rivets in order to mount the Rocky Mountains to their respective plates. So uh, let me get the little grinder wheel out here. We'll grind off the heads of these rivets, center punch them, throw them out. Adjusted. We'll uh, fine tune them later. Right now, I'm just snugging that thing up so I can now go ahead and put on the wheel. I knew what size that was. All right, we'll tighten down these lug nuts and call it good. Wheels on, now I just need to torque this, cotter pin it, but I'll do that once the car is on the ground, right before we roll. Uh, the thing that we need to tackle now is the shift rod linkage for the Ruxtal. Let's uh, jump underneath there and take a look at what's going on. That gets pushed all the way through. Like that. I've got a lock and collar for the outside. So the shaft can't come back out this direction too far. And I've got a locking color for this side so the shaft can't slide because there's nothing. This is just a straight shaft that goes through here. Uh, it goes over the top of the differential. We've got about, all oh, about five eighths of an inch clearance between the top of the shaft or the bottom of the shaft and the drive shaft. So hopefully we don't have any hammering or anything like that. Um, what I would normally have done, like on my touring car, 
I've actually got another cross shaft, emergency brake cross shaft, and they have one of those here, but it just isn't wide enough to fit the span between the two radius rods. So I often, instead of doubling up uh, emergency brake cross shaft and having another lever on the inside, we've already got a hole punched over here. So why don't we just retain that hole and make all this stuff work? So that's where we're at at the moment. So I'll put a bolt through here. Ideally, I would have rather uh, not had a bolt through it, but because I want to be able to take this thing apart later, I think having it bolted is the best option. If it was riveted like I would prefer, <laughs> uh, it would have made tearing this thing apart really difficult for the next guy. So I've got the set collar on there. Ah, tight. I've got the new set collar on the outside. It's gonna be tightened up here soon. So now that, that shaft can't move anywhere. And now we need to build the rod that goes from this point all the way back to the shifter. I've got a piece of EMT here that I've already cut to length. Now EMT on its own isn't gonna be strong enough. Uh, if I was to drill a hole in here and kind of flatten it out to attach, this hole would just basically get wallowed out. So what I'm going to do is cut a notch so it slides over, and then I'm going to weld a flat washer on either side so that washer uh, basically is taking all the pressure for the shifter. high gear performance setting, if that makes any sense. So for, lever pointed forward, and then when it shifts into low, the lever will come back to that position. That puts our shift lever right at the end of that piece of EMT conduit. Braze a couple of washers on there, and uh, we'll do our first shift. Wheels are all on, linkage is adjusted. Um, and you've probably seen in the corner of the shop a few times, well, there it is right there. We're gonna put a brand new radiator on this car. It's needed one. Uh, the radiator that used to be on it originally, just flat, didn't cut it. That's new. I've never seen them come with a drain valve. Look at that. It's beautiful flat tube, nickel neck. Pretty, pretty. Let's test out that ruck stall and see how she goes. Here we go. Yeah, that's ruck stall low. Things just ripping down the driveway. Ruck stall high. Oh, nice. I am just smitten with how good this thing sounds, how easy it shifts. If I was Charlie, I'd be uh, tickled pink right now. T-Speedsters back on the road and there really is just little tiny things that I have to get checked off before this goes back to Charlie. So um, I'm pretty happy with uh, how things have gone. Rustle's back in, car's running, 
Manifolds are built, firewall is built, front end is dropped. I mean, there's a whole checklist of things that we got done on this car. And I really appreciate everyone that has weathered the storm and made it all the way through these videos so far. Uh, if you haven't, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a subscribe. Uh, go ahead and like this video if you did. And uh, I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later.